So hi everyone, we're back with the next installment of Ogre in Conversation with and today we're sitting down with uh, Cormac Devlin, TD for Dunleary, Rath Down. So how are you Cormac? I'm very good Dara Jane, um, I'm very very good, thank you very much for asking and uh, busy time all around but busy for everybody. Absolutely yeah. So Cormac you were first elected to Dunleary, Rath Down County Council in 2004 and you were the youngest ever councillor elected at the age of 23. And then you ran in the general election in 2016 and you were unsuccessful that time. But then you were just recently elected to Dáil Éireann uh, in, the, in the general election in February. So a long time in politics for you. Yeah, I suppose it is uh, qu quite a long time already. Um, but I've enjoyed it thoroughly. And I think for anybody, particularly young people getting involved in politics, be it membership of a political party or indeed as an active uh, public representative, uh, it is interesting and of course no more like today uh, there's always some challenge ahead uh, or in the current phase where it, it brings people who want to serve and want to get involved in their community or in their area uh, politics is a great vehicle for that and um, so for me obviously I was 23 when I was first nominated uh, to run um, and you know, that was an interesting challenge because there wasn't many young people even involved in the constituency at that point. Um, there was a few of us, uh, but certainly to be a candidate was slightly different to being a member. Um, and then, uh, but it was, I think it was a good recruitment tool as well. There was a lot of people who got involved around the same time. Many of them are still members of, of the party today. Uh, we're all looking a bit older uh, than we did when we first started, but... Um, I, I think I think it's very important. I think that's the importance of Ogre. Um, in fact, at, at that time, we probably had about, oh, I'd say 28, 30 members, all from the constituency, um, very much a very active, vibrant unit of the organization. And it really fielded the whole new generation that is the senior party today. And um, so that's why I'm very eager to sit down with Ogre today and to give my own thoughts of uh, and, and memories, I suppose, of those previous years, um, but also to try and encourage other young people to either get involved in politics, as I say, be it through uh, as a public representative or just being active in their own area. Absolutely. And I suppose rolling back from um, when you were added uh, as a candidate and then uh, was it, were, you were successful, what was your earliest political memory before that? Before that, um, well, I remember going up in the house with election posters. Um, I probably was about six, I'd say, um, and posters that seemed bigger than I was at the time, uh, staring at uh, David Andrews would have been uh, a minister or a TD at the time, uh, and certainly he was uh, very well known to our family uh, as at the time, I think it was probably the 87 general election, uh, and looking at these posters had overtaken our hallway. Uh, you could barely move in the house. Um, and I remember in that election, uh, David, Ed MacDonald uh, was another candidate. Richard Conroy was another one. And David was uh, successful again at that election. Um, but I remember Char Charlie Hawhey would have come out to Dunleary canvassing and the crowds of people. Uh, totally different to today, you know, where the whole organization and indeed the wider public were very much involved uh, in were very politically astute and active uh, and wanted to meet the Taoiseach of the day or, or the party leaders. Um, but certainly seemed to me like a very um, exciting thing. And I, I remember that memory very vividly. Um, but it was um, in, interesting because that's, that's probably my earliest memory, you know, yeah. from that time. And I suppose then... Um it's it's not always easy, obviously, being a public representative. There's a lot you have to deal with. You know, the work is hard. It's long hours. It's not your standard nine to five. But I suppose, what do you? It's definitely not. But I suppose, what do you? Uh, what do you enjoy most about being a public representative? And I suppose, why do you do what you do? I think I'd say it's probably the same for every single one of us, uh, regardless of party affiliation. Uh, it is the assisting people. Um, now, you know, as a councillor, that's ultimately what you're doing. Um, you know, okay, there's the budget to pass, there's bylaws, there's a county development plan to pass, um, and there's very important work as a councillor. Um, but now, as a legislator, that's a totally different element because there's different demands of your time. 
um, there are people and there are groups, organizations who want to see changes to national legislation, uh, who want to, uh, I suppose, bring a, a kind of a relevance or importance to the work that they do, and they want you to assist in that. Uh, and now I'm speaking to you as somebody who's only a few months elected, and in theory, the role hasn't really started uh, yet because yeah. we're kind of in limbo. But that being said, um, the role is somewhat different, uh, very different to a county councillor. But as a county councillor, it was very much assisting people with the queries. Um, the housing crisis has been with us for a number of years now. I would say that's probably the probably the most um, pressing issue and, and the largest volume of queries that I deal with, uh, even to this day, sadly. Um, but certainly to assist people and meeting people. I mean, the canvas is great fun. Um, mm. It's great to meet so many individuals and families that you'd never meet. And some of them are neighbours, uh, particularly in an urban area like Dublin. You don't necessarily know everybody in the estate that you live in. And uh, to get to have a chance to converse and meet and discuss with them. Now, I have to be honest, not everybody wants to meet and converse with you either. <laughs> yeah. um, but that's, that's just that's, that's the party banner and that's the political um, decisions of individuals but by and large uh, that's what I enjoy about politics uh, is the meet and greet and indeed also the assisting of people with the queries. Absolutely and I suppose um, you spent a long time as a county councillor and I suppose you're only stepping into your role now as a TD but I suppose before you get into all the work you're going to do there what has been the highlight of your career so far? Um, I suppose the, the, the highlight for, for the 16 years I was on the council um, was election as Cahirlock in 2016. Um, we were in opposition for a number of years. Um, and when I first was elected in 2004, um, we, we began, I suppose, um, it was kind of a learning curve for me as, as a newer member of the group. Um, learning the ropes of the council group and and the ways of the council, and it does take a few years, particularly for any new uh, Ogre members who are now councillors. And I congratulate mm. them all in their in their recent elections. It's fantastic, uh, and we need that new young blood coming through. Um, but it does take a while to find your feet, and I I'm certainly under no illusion about the doll as well, and um, because it, it's it's a whole new uh, ball game. But that said, um, the it was probably 13 years since Fianna Fáil held the, the chain um, of the Hirlock in Dunleary Rathdown. And yes, uh, so that was a great privilege and honour for both of my colleagues to nominate me for that role uh, and indeed to serve uh, as first citizen of the county for, for the year. And um, it was great. My, my ambition at the time was to try and encourage uh, different groups, different organisations, community groups, schools, to come into County Hall and see the magnificent building that it is. Um, and, and I think we achieved that and uh, I certainly enjoyed it and um, it, was, it was probably the highlight of that period. Brilliant. Um, and then I suppose, what advice would you give to anyone in Ogre or any young person who's going to watch this uh, going into politics? Well, my, my golden advice is not to give advice um, because <laughs> it's it's kind of, it's a learning cur curve for everybody and uh, there are different challenges, different issues for every single uh, public representative, uh, regardless of their age, that is. Uh, anybody who's new onto the council, um, it is a steep learning curve. Um, uh, but I do think, though, that the units of the organisation are, are really important in that because you know, um, I remember a few of the battles I had in my ogre days, uh, be it on a national level. At the time, it was the youth committee and um, yeah, everybody wanted to be on what's now the central officer board or whatever the case may be. And, and those, uh, those <clears throat> battles, as it were, are very important um, because it, it does uh, give you a good grounding um, and, and allows you to uh, see what actually happens in the council chambers. And... Um, and uh, I wouldn't say that happened in the doll chamber now, but, uh, but certainly it is, it's very important. So anybody who's new, I think it's really important, particularly um, as you're new, there's going to be a county development plan coming up across the council, council chambers across the country. That's going to present challenges for, for our members. Um, and then, of course, anybody who's dealing with, but they're, they're well into it now at this stage. Um, but there's various queries and, and there's no training for this. You know, um, the public decide who's going to represent them in their area. Uh, you have to put out your stall and see if the public want to elect you. And if they, if you are um, successful in being elected and then they trust you with their vote, then the challenge is, 
um, you know, you have to learn how to uh, try and deliver on the promises that you made and indeed try and assist the people that come to you. And, that, and, that's, and you're not always successful, unfortunately, no matter how hard you try. It's, it's, uh, but that's the challenge. And that's, I suppose, the enjoyment of, of public life. Absolutely. And I suppose then you entered politics um, where you, you were um, elected first to 23. So you were very young then and, you, and you've kind of gone through it now, 16 years on the council, you're now in the doll. Um, and as anyone knows, it is a tough job and it can impact on your personal life as well as anything else. So how have you found that uh, going through for the last 16 years? I suppose you, you kind of, you get used to it uh, quite quickly. Um, Look, I mean, it's it's not it's not that intrusive to be honest. Um, but in terms of your time, it's intrusive, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think that for people around you and uh, those who aren't in politics, um, they kind of struggle with it because they just, as you said yourself, it's not the nine to five. Um, and for people around you, they kind of scratch their head, wondering, how do you do this? Because um, you're never really off. And as a public mm -hmm. representative. You're not, you're, you're accessible and probably more accessible now vis-a-vis uh, -vis social media, et cetera, than I probably was looking back in, in 2004. Um, that was Bebo and God knows what else. Uh, but that, <laughs> you know, that, there was, let's not go there, but there was certainly, <laughs> there was certainly a, a totally different um, connection with the electorate then, much more based on literature. Um, whereas now, you are contactable and everybody is with the mobile, you know? So, mm. but um, yeah, so that's, uh, I suppose that's a change. Absolutely, yeah. And I suppose you're obviously very busy now with COVID and everything going on, government formation. Yes, so yes, if you yeah. can find the spare time, what, what do you enjoy doing with that? Uh, well, I haven't done it actually really, I suppose, since, uh, since the restrictions came in, but um, Two years ago, I did a, during the summer, I, there's obviously a coastal county, a coastal constituency in Dunleary, we have fantastic harbour, um, and I decided I was, it was when I was Cahirlock actually, um, I was launching uh, two ribs for uh, people with special needs, to bring them out on the water and allow them to have access to the water. It was when, with one of the clubs, and um, I was out on, on one of the powerboats, and I thought it was pretty cool. And then I was told that there was courses, which I never knew they, you could do in the harbour. So I did the course two years ago. Uh, and so I go out on the, um, on the, on the motorised ribs, the powerboats, uh, out onto the water. But I haven't done it for a while because I have to rent the boat uh, and have to have the time to do all that. Um, but it's certainly, when, it, when you're out in the water, it's beautiful. And we've got Dorky Island as well, not too far from the coast. Uh, you can go out on the... Uh, you can be taken over um, by Ken, the ferryman, who will take you over and back, and it's beautiful. So we're very lucky to have such beautiful uh, scenery and uh, beautiful amenities in the immediate area. So uh, I try and get out to those as much as possible. Brilliant. And as you mentioned earlier, you know, you, you enjoy being out, meeting people, being on the canvas. So yeah. is there any particular funny story from the canvas or just a nice one that you like to uh, remember? Yeah, well, I suppose which ones can can you tell? Um, <laughs> yeah. uh, the uh, I suppose uh, going back to two thousand and four, a local election. Um, I suppose not really a canvassing story, but I was uh, working in an office, um, and it was on a very prominent corner in the constituency or in the ward, and I approached the boss to say, "Could I put a banner on the side of the building?" And uh, he had a lovely view out of his office of the bay. And uh, he said, well, yeah, how big is the banner? And I said, I'm not sure of the full dimensions because it hadn't been printed yet. And uh, it turned out the banner was 20 foot. So it <laughs> obliterated his view, uh, the view of the boardroom. Uh, now this thing was enormous, uh, but it was a, a great um, campaign tool. Um, I was successful in the election and I was successful in keeping my job just about. Uh, because the winter after that election, the election was June, and in September and October, uh, there was a massive leak in the roof uh, from where the banner had been drilled in, and the actual um, suspended ceiling collapsed uh, in the corner where the uh, banner had been. So uh, now they were very good about it, um, and it's shortly after the building was, uh, they moved out of that office, uh, but... Um, yeah, so it probably wasn't that popular after that election with uh, that particular <laughs> group. But we're still we're still friends, and uh, but it was uh, it was just one of those things where you have to 
I suppose, avail of the opportunity that knocked, uh, I did, and they were very kind and obliging, but uh, there was long-lasting consequences to that banner, I can tell you. So you're lucky you got over the election before, <laughs> before the roof caved in. Absolutely, <laughs> literally, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's, there's a metaphor in there somewhere, you know? <laughs> so, um, I think that's all the hired questions out of the way now, Cormac. We just have a couple of quick fire ones if you're up yep. for those. They're just sure, a bit of fun. Absolutely, yeah. So, Cormac, would you uh, would you drink Barry's or Lions tea? Oh, I hear it now. Uh, <laughs> Lions, no question. Okay. And then, um, what is your favorite place? And you cannot say John Lear, your wrath down. Okay. Favorite place. <laughs> um, uh, we actually spent the summer last summer up in Donegal. Uh, we took a holiday up there. Um, fabulous uh, spot. And uh, Wexford, uh, we go down to Wexford quite a bit. Uh, friends have a place down there, so we go down and see them. Obviously, this summer is going to be totally different. Uh, so uh, so uh, we'll yeah. have to see if we'll be going anywhere. But um, it's, uh, you yeah, know, we've some beautiful uh, coastline around the country. I'm a big fan of the coast and uh, love the beach and stuff like that. So um wherever we can but we're, we're very fortunate in this country to have loads of that so we're not stuck this summer uh, we'll spend somewhere uh, in ireland hopefully depending on how the restrictions go so Brilliant. i won't break the restrictions <laughs> no no and then uh, a person from another political party that you admire uh oh okay uh, in ireland anywhere anywhere um okay i would say um well the democrats in in the us um following the the actual um you know presidential debates there uh or or certainly the primaries and stuff uh for joe biden i'd say you know he's the comeback kid certainly uh, people wrote him off um you know bernie sanders i thought was going to do it this time to be honest and that mm. didn't happen um, but I have to admire the man for his energy and drive. Um, and he has uh, proved a lot of detractors wrong uh, in terms of how he's conducted himself so far in the campaign. But Joe will no doubt uh, provide a lot of entertainment um, over the next couple of months. Um, but certainly I, I admire what he's done so far because, as I say, people had written him off a number of months yeah. ago. And he had a lot of challenges ahead of him, but he's cleared the field. Uh, and uh, it's going to be an interesting one to watch. Absolutely, yeah. No, it was interesting watching the primaries come in after you look at all the polls and that leading up to it, and it was definitely a Ab shock. Absolutely, yeah. And really, I, you know, I, I feel bad for Bernie in a way because obviously what we know now about the previous primaries, um, you know, you feel like the man should have had an opportunity to to run and contest, but uh, that wasn't to be. And uh, as I say, just watching Joe. Uh, and how many hur hurdles I suppose he's overcome to get there. Um, it, you have to admire that. Absolutely. And then Cormac, uh, can you tell us your best or worst joke, if you have one? Best joke? Oh, no, I'd say I'd say it'll be the worst joke if I told it. Uh, that's the problem. <laughs> uh, but uh, no, I wouldn't have any uh, jokes off uh, that I could. That you can no, tell us. I don't think it would work. <laughs> well, we won't. We won't do, do anything controversial. I won't subject the viewers to that one. <laughs> and then the last one: uh, if there was a film going to be made about your life, um, I suppose who would you want to play you? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> uh, who do I want to play? Well, uh, sorry, Matt Damon is now in Dorky. There you go. You there could, we go. There we I don't go. Think, I don't think they could afford him, nor we don't look anything alike. So sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> no bother at all. Cormac, thanks a million for sitting down. Thank you very much, Sarah Jane. Appreciate that. Cheers. Hope you and the family are safe. Talk to Thank you soon. very much. Thanks a million. Take care. Bye.